for the SPD part of the coalition government, that's the Social Democrats, which Olaf Scholz leads, there is some concern that exporting tanks to Ukraine could escalate tensions, could prolong the war and could minimise the chances of peace negotiations. But that is an argument which is not necessarily uh, bought by other members of the coalition, namely the Green Party and the FDP, the sort of small business, uh, small government party that uh, all three of them govern together. And so we've had this intense debate um, within Germany, within the government in recent months uh, about whether it's the right time to send these Leopard 2 tanks or not. The reason this is so important is because it's not just Germany which possesses a really large number of these tanks, but a number of other European countries as well. And under international weapons export regulations, because the tanks were made here in Germany, any other country that owns them first has to ask permission from Germany to resell them or to give them to another country. So we understand Germany has been putting the brakes on countries like Spain and Poland and Finland from doing so. So that will all form part of this big discussion on Friday when uh, uh, a number of Western allies will meet at the Ramstein Air Force Base um, to discuss the next steps. We understand the big talking point will be tanks for Ukraine, uh, but political pressure really is growing uh, here in Berlin and especially on Olaf Scholz and all of this. In fact, I've just seen in the past hour or so Friedrich Merz, who is the opposition leader here, he has said the first thing the new defence minister should do is give the green light for those tanks to be given to Ukraine. So plenty more to see on this story, Robin. So Trent, uh, give us a sense of what the mood's like in Germany at the moment about the war in Ukraine. Well, it's an interesting one because a lot of the polling uh, consistently shows that the current approach of giving weapons to Ukraine uh, and helping them defend their territory does seem to be accepted by a majority of people. Uh, around 70% of Germans will say they approve of the government's current approach to helping uh, Ukraine with its self-defence. There are, of course, other lingering issues which stem from this war, like the economic impact, inflation, energy shortages, but it seems a lot of that has been mitigated by a bit of a stroke of luck in some ways. The weather here has been much more mild than our previous winters, meaning there hasn't been as much need for gas, but what gas has been used is a lot less than previous years because households seem to be heeding those calls that the government had put out in recent months to try and use less gas in order to make up for the shortfall left by Russia's decision to cut off supplies. So, of course, it's very hard to predict the future. The longer this war goes on and the more of an impact there is, it potentially may change. But certainly right now there does appear to be support uh, for Germany and Europe to continue supporting Ukraine. I should say, though, on the question of tanks, that one is a little bit more controversial. It's around 50-50. Around one in two people are a bit cautious on sending the main battle tanks. So if they do indeed get sent, there will be some political work needed selling that message to the German people that it was the right decision.